welcome back to another Swift tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to create a drop down menu. So we open our app here, we have our red bar up here, and when we tap it, we get this nice looking menu that opens up that we've got images in here with our uh, respective text. And once we select an item, for now we just show an alert based on what we have tapped, but of course in your actual app you can present a view controller or uh, do whatever else you want to do. So we're going to look at how to create basic item cells for this menu, so a menu with no icons. And then we're also going to look at how to add these icons and uh, for that matter customize the menu however you want it with your custom UI and colors and all that fun jazz. So before we get started make sure you drop a like down below, subscribe if you're new, get Xcode ready, and let's get into it. So we're going to begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application and we'll call this application my drop down menu. Let's save it on our desktop and get into it. So the first thing we need to do is bring in the framework that lets us create the drop down and we're going to bring it in via CocoaPods as we usually do in these videos. So open up terminal and feel free to follow along if you're not familiar with CocoaPods as long as it's installed. Otherwise watch the video on what they are that I've done a couple weeks ago. So let's cd into the project, do a pod init to initialize CocoaPods, do a open pod file, which will open text edit. And we need to put the CocoaPod name in here, which I believe is called just dropdown, capital D. And let's lowercase that pod, close text edit, and do a pod install. And fun fact, if you want to clear your window like I just did there, you can hit Command K. It's a little easier to read after all this stuff gets printed out. But once you hit enter, you should see some green messages down here indicating success. You might not have all of this jazz. I just have some weird settings on my computer. So with that said, if you do an ls, you'll see there is a .xc workspace in here. And we need to open that. So let's hit Command W on this Xcode window. Let's close it and let's open up my drop down menu.exe workspace. All right, cool. So now that we have the framework in here, let's first expand Xcode to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's also expand this folder here, which includes all our frameworks and our project. And we're going to first select our simulator, hit Command R to build and run to make sure. We didn't break anything while installing CocoaPods. And we should see our empty application here. So let's actually add the menu now. So the first thing we're going to do, even though I said first thing like 10 times already, uh, is we're going to go to the storyboard. And we want to embed this controller in a navigation controller. So select it up here, come up to your toolbar and hit editor, embed in, and we want to select navigation controller. This will basically pop a navigation controller into your storyboard and connect everything. Let's also give this a title. So let's see. Let's click here. We'll just call this home and hit Command R to build and run. And you see we have a bar up here and I just added the title so we can see the bar is indeed up here. Um, we're going to be putting a view over it so it'll be going away, but just so you guys can see it, there it is. So the next thing we want to do is go to our view controller and actually write the code to create our dropdown menu. So let's import the framework called dropdown and start creating a menu. So we're going to call it menu. It'll be a dropdown. And in here we're going to create another menu which we're going to return and we're going to return a menu like so. We are also going to set up the items in the menu. So we're going to say menu dot data source and let's just put in item one. Let's copy and paste this a few times like so. And let's change these numbers. The next thing we want to do is actually put a view in our navigation bar. And when we tap that view, we want to show the menu. So to do that in view to load, we are going to first create a view and we'll call it my view. 
is a UI view and its frame is going to be the same size of the navigation bar, which is why we created the navigation controller. And if that frame is nil for some reason, we're going to default it to a frame of zero, but in fact, it should never be nil. And we're getting a warning because we created this view, but we're not using it yet. But now we're going to say navigation controller dot navigation bar and let's see top item dot title view equals my view. And now what we want to do is add a gesture recognizer to this view. And when we basically tap on this my view, we want to open the menu. So first we're going to unwrap it, which is going to basically be all of this. We can copy and paste it. We're going to say guard let top view is all this stuff. Top item dot title view. Else we're going to return. And here, we're going to say let gesture equals UI tap gesture recognizer. Target is going to be self and we're going to perform the selector called did tap top item, which we're going to create in a second. And let's see, we need to say, let's actually create it before I forget. Uh, but we're going to say gesture dot number gesture dot number of taps required is one and number of touches required is also one. And lastly, let's add this gesture to our top view. Hit command B to build and run. And before we actually run, um, in this function, we want to basically say menu dot show. And if you recall, the menu is our drop down menu up here. And when we tap on the top item via the gesture, we're going to ask the app to show our menu. So hit command R to build and run. And if we hit this, we see that we get our menu, but it's not actually coming down from the top, which is not what we want. And the reason is we did not set an anchor view. So an anchor view, as the name implies, kind of tells the menu where to open down from. In other words, where it's anchored from. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say menu that anchor view is top view. And let's actually also set a background color to my view just so it's easier to visualize. Hit command R to build and run. And we see we have this red view up here and we tap it, we get our menu. And when we tap anywhere uh, that's not on the menu, it closes. And what we're going to first do is uh, let's go through how to actually figure out which element was tapped. And then we're going to customize the menu a little bit just so you guys can see the power behind this framework and all of the features that it offers. So to get the um, selection for the menu, you basically just want to set the um, selection action which will have an index and a title. And let's just print out what the index and title is right now. Hit Command R to build and run. Let's open up the menu and tap on one of these. And we see down here in our console that we get the indexed position and the title that we tapped. So that said, let's stop the execution close this bottom panel and let's talk about customizing this a little bit. So as you saw in the demo in the very beginning of this video, we had some images in our drop down menu. So we want to add those images and to do that, it's fairly simple. We need to create a subclass of the drop down cell and just configure it with to have an image view in the storyboard. So we're going to right click this and create a new file. We're going to select a Cocoa Touch class. This will be a subclass of drop down cell. I'm going to check this box to create an XIB file. Let's call this drop, actually, let's just call this my cell instead of drop down cell so the names don't conflict. Save it. The first thing you want to do is import uh, drop down in here. And you also want to change the name of 
the Swift file and the XIB file to be drop-down cell because that's what the framework expects. Uh, I personally think it's a bug that they have, but you need to change the names, otherwise your app will crash. You also need to create an outlet for your image view that we're gonna add. Let's set the image views content mode to be scale aspect fit. And let's go set up the XIB. Let's expand this a little bit. So the first thing in here, we're gonna set the cell identifier to the drop-down cell. We're gonna bring in an image view and drop it in like so. Let's add some constraints to it down here. First one we're gonna add is we're gonna vertically center the image. We also wanna add uh, a left constraint. We're gonna say three and the width and height will do 30. So we get our image there and it looks a little small but when you actually uh, open this up in the menu, you'll see the sizing is correct. Let's bring in a UI label and I'll mention that a label is required because that is an expectation of the base menu item, even though we did not add the outlet for it. Let's add some constraints to be three all the way around. Whoops, let's try that one more time because we don't want to overlap the image. Let's delete it and bring it in again. And let's come down here to constraints. Whoops. Let's do three, 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 and three. And uh, I guess it wasn't actually overlapping the image, it's just super close. So let's edit the left constraint over here in the uh, size editor. So hit the ruler up here. And we wanna edit the, I believe, leading constraint, which is this one. And we're gonna make this 12. And we hit enter after zooming out and you'll see that we have a okay-ish amount of space now. Right click on the cell class up here. We wanna connect the outlets. The first one is the one we created for my image view. So drag from that to the image view. The other one that we need to uh, connect is optional label or option label. And this is the one that the dropdown cell gives to us. And if you recall, we did not actually add this in the code, but it is required. Otherwise your app will crash. This is the label where the actual menu items title goes. So once that is set up, hit Command B to make sure things are still building. Let's go back to our view controller and add a little more code to support this custom cell. So the first thing you want to do is say menu dot uh, cell nib is a UI nib with a name and a bundle. Bundle is nil. The nib name is going to be the name that we gave the file here. So drop down cell. And we also need to do one more thing, which is menu dot custom cell configuration. And this takes a index, title, and cell in. And basically in here, similar to a table view, we want to configure the cell. So we're going to say guard let cell equal cell as my cell. And we're going to say cell dot my image view dot image is a UI image. And we're going to use one of the system images since we didn't bring in any. And we'll use bookmark. And I believe that's it. So let's hit command R to build and run. And we should hopefully not crash. And if we open this, we can see now that we have this image on the left here and our titles, which are all different. And let me just do one more thing before wrapping up this video. Um, and actually also the selection function here, the block that we created, still applies for custom cells. So no worries on that. But the other thing I'll do before wrapping this up is um, right now we just have this one static image. What if we want multiple images? Well, we can just create an array called images and we're gonna pass in, instead of a static image name, we'll pass in uh, the positioned uh, image name. 
like so. And let's just change these to be actual image names. So we'll do bookmark. Uh, I think it's called house, gear, ear, and book. I think those are all system image names, if I'm not mistaken. So let's click this. And we see we have our different images here. So yeah, that's about it. Um, just to do a quick recap, because I know I jumped around a little bit. We have our view controller where we import drop down. We configure the drop down menu object in this block. If I can select it right here. We of course add a top view to the navigation bar with a gesture. And when that gesture gets uh, tapped, invoked, we show the menu. We have a selection closure here for when the user taps on a item in the menu, we want something to occur. That might be to show a different controller or something. For now, we're just printing. And we also looked at how to customize the item by creating a subclass of a drop-down cell and creating an outlet in here, very similar to table view cells and collection view cells. We configured the XIB file. Uh, don't forget to bring in the option label, which is required. And yeah, that's about it. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like down below. Helps out quite a bit. Uh, if you have a question or a comment or feedback or just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. I always love hearing from you guys. I try to reply to every single comment. Uh, if you're new, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll catch you in the next video.